We're here at the 20th Croy with Beatrice Hahn, who is professor of medicine at the University of Pennsylvania and works in basic science. And I'm excited to have you because you are um, kind of well-renowned in the field of basic science. You've done so many great things in HIV. You do work in other fields in other areas, but you, you like to say this is the important one. This brings in the bucks that really keep you alive and moving forward. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your history and the work that you've done in the past. So I've always been interested in, in the uh, uh, origin and evolution of HIV-1 uh, and, and its uh, primate precursors, uh, but um, I'm also interested in, 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 in helping um, uh, to try to make a protective vaccine against HIV-1. So those are the two major fields I'm working in. Mm -hmm. no, just, I, I know that we, I may have said this before because I know I interviewed you before and we interviewed Dr. Sharp and it was in the middle of the interview with him that he said, I can't contain you in this because I'm going to, it, it might jeopardize my present, my uh, publication. And I, I thought, well, we could embargo it. But anyway, so can you tell a little bit about the work that was, it was, it was so, and it was so exciting because it was monkey droppings in the, in the forest. Uh, he, he, I'm not sure what he was referring to. Uh, over the years, we had a number of, of, yeah. of high-profile papers that, that could have uh, yeah. fallen under that category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so the short uh, version uh, of the story is that we used non-invasive approaches, uh, basically looking uh, in, in uh, fecal samples mm -hmm. of wild apes in Africa to trace back the origin of HIV-1 mm -hmm. and then more recently the origin of the malaria parasite Plasmodium falciparum. Uh, and we were fortunate in that fecal samples contained the information that we needed to do that. So you didn't have to sacrifice any animals? Or that would yeah. not be <laughs> not a good thing, and it would not be an option, and it would <laughs> certainly not be what we want to do since yeah. they are highly endangered as it is. Yeah. So um, the work that you're doing now, if you can kind of cover that a little bit, because it's, 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 I want to let the audience who likes to watch these programs understand how interesting science is without putting any special bells and whistles on it. it, it science is interesting, and I, I think if you can bring that to us, that would be a great thing. Absolutely. If you're a curious person, you want to be a scientist because mm -hmm. it gives you an opportunity uh, to find out things that no one has uh, seen before you. Yeah. And in, in the field of HIV, what we are most interested in right now is to understand the transmission process. Uh, the, the, in particular, how is uh, HIV-1 transmitted from one person uh, to another by mucosal routes? Mm -hmm. uh, because mucosal transmission is associated with a severe virus population bottleneck mm -hmm. to the point where uh, you have ma many, many different variants in, in, in the infected donor, yet uh, in 60 to 80 percent of the recipients it's only a single variant that is transmitted. That was discovered a couple years back. Mm -hmm. And that's in principle good news because any intervention at that point only has to deal with a single variant and not a whole slew of them. It's kind of like uh, the, uh, the seeding of the egg in the birthing process. <laughs> in, in many ways. And so we want to understand um, uh, how this works. In particular, we want to understand what are the properties of the viruses that make it. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of phenotypic properties do they have to have to be what we call transmitted founder viruses? Mm -hmm. They are not only transmitted, but they also found a new productive infection. Mm -hmm. And so over the past um, um, basically five years, uh, through an organization that's called CHAVI, and now it's called CHAVI ID, uh, acronym stands for Centers for HIV AIDS Immune Vaccine, I, I don't know, you have to look it up. Um, the, the purpose is uh, to, to pave the way for a protective vaccine. Mm -hmm. And in, in the context of, of, of that group, we have worked on uh, the biological properties of transmitted founder viruses. And what I presented yesterday in the Young Investigator session was some of the features that we were able to dissect uh, that these viruses have. Well, I was going to say, the, 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 you know, people that are watching this program want the simple, basic, okay, this is, what's the answer? You know, the answer is it, it's, it's the best. But it's, but it's, it's so complicated. I think we, we understand that what you're doing is a piece 
yes. of what we need to know. And that it's all these pieces, uh, many of the pieces that are collectively presented here, and, and this is a part of learning about the other pieces that they're going to be a component of what you're learning collectively is the answer. But there is no simple answer, I think, uh, down the line. It's, it's just going to be an ev evolving learning process and a, 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 a bumpy road, hiccups, all the things that go with research. We're, the reason we're doing research is because it's unknown. Correct. You know, we have to have the answer. Correct. And, and we don't find the cure with just saying, okay, oh, here it is. You know, it's, it's going to be a process of multiple steps that make it to the, answer, the final answer. That is absolutely correct. And in that uh, sense, HIV is not a unique field. That is true for any type yes. of biomedical research. And you just have to be uh, willing to be there for the long haul uh, and to accept the occasional failure or the step back in order to then leap uh, forward again. And, and people always want the quick fix yesterday, and yeah. it just doesn't yeah. happen. This, this is not a simple course of antibiotics. This no. Is, this is a long road. And, and, but I, I think it's exciting to follow this road as, as learning activists and actually people are living with the disease or people are just curious scientifically uh, to follow this process because um, people like you will help to make it interesting. They'll, you'll give the piece that, that you're learning now and you might answer the, uh, the question you're answering, but it is just a piece of the process down the road too. And how do you feel about the vaccine? Do you feel more hopeful now? I do feel again? more hopeful. Uh, because uh, there are a lot of things we have discovered in the past um, a couple of years uh, that lets me see the light at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. which I didn't see before. Um, it, it's not going to be the quick fix mm -hmm. that people would like to have, but I, I see a, a path forward, a trajectory that I, at least my gut feeling tells me, will be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you had the golden bullet today, in, on your lab bench, knowing this works, it would take 10 years minimum mm -hmm. to translate that into a product mm -hmm. that can be given safely to millions of people. And we don't even have the golden bullet yet, mm -hmm. but I believe we are on the right trajectory collectively as a, as a research, uh, as a group of, of scientists uh, to, to eventually get there. We have the, the proof of concept in some cases. And I wouldn't go as far as to say we have proof of concept. We have some, some insightful ideas where we have to go, and we are definitely um, treading on new territory here. This is not vaccine development as usual. This is not the way things have been successfully done for other infectious diseases in the past, because the difference is uh, most vaccines uh, do not prevent infection, they prevent disease. Mm -hmm. And with HIV, you have to prevent infection because of the nature of the virus it, uh, integrating itself into the host cell genome. Well, do you have any, uh, uh, remember when moments that you can re recount with some of your friends of, uh, and colleagues because of the, the issue around, uh, well, envelope protein, and we, there was some hope early on about this is the way it would work, but it, it didn't. And, well, it, it didn't, and, 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 and it did in the sense that we, d the quick fixes didn't. Yeah. Not necessarily the, the, the overall approach. For example, envelope glycoprotein. Mm -hmm. um, everybody realizes that this is the outer code of the, of the virus that you know, facilitates cell entry. We need to understand it, and if we had something against that protein, we'd probably be in good shape. Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes. But our in very early uh, approaches toward uh, making an envelope-based vaccine were, were a bit crude, mm -hmm. uh, uh, at least at, at Retrospect retrospectively. Look effectively looking yes. at it, yeah. It's yeah. much more complicated as we come to learn, and, and the structure uh, of, of the envelope like a protein is now beginning uh, to, to be deciphered uh, to greater and greater detail with the work of Joe Sadrowski, for example, uh, who's using a really novel uh, way at, at, at looking at that. And, and as we delve deeper and as we chip away uh, th the things we don't want to see and hone in on what we do want to see, uh, the, the, the vision becomes clearer and therefore the light at the end of the tunnel yes. starts to flicker. Yeah. We had one of our colleagues before the program started was asking about the Pro 140 and, and how you viewed, the, well you I maybe had been doing some collective work on that. 
So um, I am very passionate about chimpanzees and um, I am passionate about the fact that they have a virus very similar to humans, which makes them ill very similar to humans. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also very passionate uh, about a particular chimpanzee community in Gombe National Park in Tanzania because I've been studying that uh, a group of chimps for the past 15 years almost. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a very unique um, uh, group of chimps because Jane Goodall established a site mm -hmm. uh, in the 1960s and since that time people have followed these chimpanzees literally every day. Mm -hmm. They know everything about them you can possibly know. They know when they're born and who their mother and father is and yeah. uh, what they do on a daily basis, what their social structure is, their culture, they know everything and we know from our non-invasive studies, who has SIV ZPZ infection, who yeah. doesn't. Yeah. And we also know what happens to those that are infected compared to those that are not, and that allowed us in the past to establish that SIV ZPZ, like HIV-1 in humans, is quite pathogenic and causes AIDS in some individuals. So I, we've been thinking, what can we do about it? And the unique um, uh, situation about Gombe is it's, it's um, uh, landlocked in, in a sense because so it's sterile. It, 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 yes, yeah. no chimps go in mm -hmm. from outside and mm -hmm. no chimps go out. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, it's a contained um, uh, community in, 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 in a national park. Uh, and we've been thinking uh, what could we do to prevent transmission, further transmission? Because at, at one point, if we were able to do that, the virus would simply die out there because. Mm -hmm it couldn't come in by any other means. And I've been very intrigued uh, seeing uh, people working with potent uh, antibodies, uh, Pro-140 uh, being yeah. one, mm -hmm. uh, neutralizing highly diverse strains of viruses. And so we recently started to test Pro-140 and other uh, antibodies like it um, uh, with different specificities to know uh, are there antibodies out there? that could be as potent against SIV ZPZ, which is of course much, much more divergent mm -hmm. than HIV-1 is, and that is already divergent enough. Mm -hmm. Are there antibodies out there that could potently neutralize the viruses in Gombe? And the answer seems to be yes. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the ultimate goal, and we would have to try to get funding for that, which in this climate is almost yes. impossible, Sadly. we would, we would we would want to deliver genes that express these antibodies to the infected chimps in Gambi who we know personally, mm -hmm. by say, not invasively, but say by a blowgun approach, a mm -hmm. one shot fixes mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. uh, and the genes could be delivered in a way uh, like gene therapy is delivered to people with an AAV vector into the muscle and you could convert the, you know, thigh of a chimp into a vaccine factory making these antibodies, combating their own viruses, perhaps not leading to a benefit uh, for themselves, but at least bringing down viral loads. So viral load, yeah. Correct, such yeah. that transmission would be abrogated. And that would be a great success story because then we would simply only need to sit back and wait until the virus uh, eradicates itself. But all of this is done also from a translation into Absolutely. humans. Absolutely. Of course, this would be an approach that would benefit both species because mm -hmm. proof of principle in one would inform uh, the experiments mm -hmm. in, in the other. And people are seriously uh, contemplating, and, and they should, because it, it could really be a breakthrough mm -hmm. to utilize these potent antibodies that in many instances are made by infected mm -hmm. people, uh, albeit very late in their infection, after the sort of the water is under the bridge, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, these, these antibodies have been cloned. They can be uh, put in expression vectors. They can be delivered as antibodies. They can be delivered as molecular constructs. They can be delivered into infected people or uninfected people. There's a whole variety of things you can do. And if we were able to do this in the chimps, it would potentially benefit them as well as the human trials, which almost certainly will come uh, by, by uh, you know, informing each other. 
And in fact, we, before we ever would go into the wild, we would try to get a proof of concept in infected chimps in captivity. Remember, in the early days, uh, there was the hope that the chimp would be a model yes. for HIV, and it never turned out to be, but there's still a number of chimps sitting around with HIV-1 infection mm -hmm. that are slowly progressing toward dropping their CD4 cells. They mm -hmm. sit in primate centers and sanctuaries and eventually need treatment, which is expensive. And if we could um, uh, do proof of principle in, in, in those animals, we might be able to help them so as well as, yes, as well as pushing the whole thing forward mm -hmm. uh, into the wild. You know, as exciting as what you've just said is enough, there are other issues with the, the learning that we get from the science that you're doing on HIV and with monkeys and, and humans, of course, too. Um, all of this kind of helps all the other diseases. It, it helps moves the entire field of science down the road. No question about it. Uh, this could be a platform vaccine, either therapeutic or preventative for a whole variety of either human or animal pathogens. Uh, so. So uh, no question, you know, we, we do science in an incremental way. Usually the increments are, are small and not flashy and hence not newsworthy, but, but over decades it adds up uh, to a more complete story and new technologies that ultimately don't only benefit the people in one particular field, but have far-reaching uh, implications for people in other fields. The, the work that you do is basic science, so it is the, the pre-step to the clinic where the people begin to see the evidence of your work as it evolves to where they then become integrated into it and they can learn through the process of them being involved with the trial and follow that work and then also see the answers that may then progress to the final answer of a cure or a vaccine or a good therapeutic Absolutely, treatment. and I think it is important that, that people are informed and educated so they can think along with the scientists. Uh, HIV AIDS, uh, that field is a prime example where the collaboration between patients and their doctors and the scientists mm -hmm. uh, has been critical in, right. in, in uncovering all sorts of, of, of important new uh, insights in how the virus works in a person. Uh, without that, we would be nowhere. And I mean, mm -hmm. there, there are hundreds and hundreds of people that you know undergo not so nice procedures mm -hmm. in order to help science to understand what it Correct. Yeah. And I think it needs, it requires that collaboration to ultimately succeed. Right. Well, this is, the, uh, this is the opportunity for the people who are out there watching this program to say, maybe this is the moment where you can say, I really do want to get engaged. I want to be a part of a community advisory board, or I want to get on an IRB, or, or whatever it is involved with the science, with the people who are doing the science, and or watching them through the vicariously through this medium here, or other stories, or other uh, programs, or other journals, and so forth. You have to start small, get to where you can learn the, the, the lingo, <laughs> and the language, and the, the acronyms, and everything else. And then you get into the community activity, and you get to become more informed about how this, how this program works, and, and, what the sci and how exciting the science is. It, it has multiple benefits. You get the excitement, but you also have a more sober outlook. You begin to understand where the hurdles are and how huge they are and what it takes to overcome them. Uh, be you become part of an enterprise rather than be someone who watches from the outside. And so I think uh, uh, the more uh, people get engaged in these types of things, the better. They become less inappropriately hopeful and they become more realistically hopeful. Correct. Yeah. Well, listen, I really appreciate you taking the time. It's been very helpful. It's been very uh, exciting, and, it, and uh, we're just at the beginning of the conference, so uh, you have all that to look forward to, and then all the other conferences yes. in the future. Yes. Wish you well so Thank much. You Thank you very much. Thank yes. you.